Kelly Lechner, the Aquatic Director here at the Marstown YMCA YWCA. We have lots of things going on here this fall in the aquatic world. We have Porpoise Club that starts September 14th through October 7th. It runs Monday and Wednesday nights, 5.30 to 6.30. Our next round of swim lesson registration will begin September 21st with classes beginning on the 28th. That session is just Monday and Wednesday evenings. It's a four week session. In October, on October 12th, we have a swim team that will start. We are still working on finding meets and things for this winter. And also our open swims on the weekends from one to five, both days. Right now we are still not doing evening open swims. So we look forward to seeing you on the weekends. If you have any questions, please contact the Y at 752-8658 or you can reach me at shelley.lechner at ymca-ywca.org. As of Monday, August 10th, uh, the Aquatic Center is now closed for open swimming. We will still be open for swim lessons, water walking, lap swim, and our uh, adult tiny top program, or swim lesson program. Uh, so water walking will still go on. Uh, through September 21st. Uh, we'll have uh, water walking and lap swim times from 11.30 to 12.30, 4 to 5, and 7 to 8. And that's a new time. We've kind of bumped it up early to make sure we got done before dark. Uh, and swim lessons will still be going on between 9 and noon. And uh, our adult swim class on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays will still be going on at 11.30 as well. So a few changes to the Aquatic Center happened a little earlier than normal, but uh, due to the kind of COVID and a lot of our staff being college kids, they're being asked to return to school and can't leave then. So we just didn't have enough staff to finish out the season like normal. Yeah, so I, I'd probably just go to our website, uh, Marshall, M -M -Town Park and Rec .com. Uh You can see all the updated aquatic schedules or give us a call at 754-5715, extension one. Hi, I'm Mike Tupper with the Marshalltown Police Department. Uh, we want the community to be aware that the city of Marshalltown will be sending out city employees to conduct damage assessments as a result of the uh, storms that passed through our community on August 10th. Uh, these uh, uh, employees will be uh, checking structures and checking for um, properties that have significant damage so that we can uh, begin to conduct a damage assessment for our community that will in the long run help our community determine whether or not we're eligible for any state or federal disaster relief funding. Uh, it, it is possible that if you sustained significant major damage or your structure was destroyed that the city will place a placard on your property and on that placard it will give you some instructions and, and the main thing for you to be aware of is that you should call the uh, Marshalltown Housing Department and uh, discuss with them what your plan is for repairing or dealing with the damage on your property. If you have any questions about these placards, uh, please call the housing department and their number is 641-754-5756. They'll be happy to help you with any questions or concerns that you have. If your house or your property is placarded, you will have until September 15 to respond to the housing department with your plan or to call them with your questions so that they can help you resolve the issue. Again, if you have any questions, please call 641-754-5756. Thank you. Well, hi everybody. I wanna welcome you back to the library. It's been, I don't wanna say it's been an adventure, but um, I hope you know the library has been here trying to serve all of the community and you know different ways and trying to make adjustments first COVID and then now of course the recent derecho. One of the things that we've done because we have limited resources in the building and we're going to show you what we mean is that we've added a couple of picnic tables outside. We're actually going to probably add a third one. So you're welcome to come here and sit. You can use the Wi-Fi here. We do ask that um, you know, you be, if somebody's waiting, it looks like they've got their laptop or something that, you know, maybe you, if you're not comfortable sharing, that, you know, you kind of limit your time. So it's not, you know, again, I know it's a nice place to sit under the tree in the shade, but, um, you know, we do hoping this is to offer somebody to have a little more time with the, with the um, Wi-Fi. So if you have Wi-Fi issues too, let us know and we'll try to help you. 
But uh, we're going to go inside and we're going to show you some of the changes and we're going to talk about what's happening here at the library. So, um, you know, right now the best way is to check the Facebook page, the library's web page. But if you're like me and right now I have no internet at my house, uh, you can always call. Hopefully everybody's phones are working. I know during the, uh, the storm I was having really spotty cell phone service. So um, on the outside of the building, one of the changes too is that we do ask that you return all your library materials outside, either the walk-up book drop or the drive-up book drop. I think lots of people are unaware that we have the drive-up book drop, so it's on the back side on the Lynn. So as you come up here, so also if you haven't used curbside pickup, and curbside is when you, you can go online and place a book on hold, or you can call us or email us, and then you park in one of the three curbside spots, and then you call us on the phone number listed on the board, and then we bring the books out to you. So, and we are happy to keep doing curbside. Now I know some people are eager to get back in the building, but curbside is a great way to go. So, but if you're coming into the building, please come here first, return your books at the book drop. So we've got the book one, the audio, and this is the trash bin. And I know sometimes people get a little confused, but uh, don't, don't put your books in the trash bin, please. So anyways, so please return everything here before you come in the building. Okay, so now we're gonna go in the back of the building. So here we come back here, and I can show you a couple things kind of behind the scenes. So one thing is, so curbside, for those of you who are doing curbside, you can see you know these purple bags now. Um, these are all the things that are waiting for people to come and pick them up. So you can see the assortment of items, we have people that have box loads of things. And I know sometimes people are very concerned about uh, their items haven't come off their record. That's because uh, we are quarantining items. This is actually pretty small. Uh, so these are all items that have been returned and they sit for five days, which is what the scientists have recommended. Um, and so then we check them in and then they come off your record. So again, I know people are, we have some people that like to see their items come off as soon as they return them and that's not happening. Okay, so now we're gonna go out to the public area. So we're gonna go out this door. So you can see this is where my staff spent a lot of time. So you'll see, of course, one of the immediate changes is like everybody, like Hy-Vee and Fairway, is we have lots of plexiglass. So, um, and there's a different way that you check books out. Uh, my staff can walk you through it. So, lots of uh, hand sanitizing stations. So when you do walk through the doors between 12 and 6, right now, Monday through Friday, those are the current hours, with curbside pickup on Sundays from 1 to 3, you're going to stop here. And usually I'm here, or maybe another staff member, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about um, welcoming back to the library. Thank you for wearing a mask. So you see that I'm wearing a mask, and all my staff's wearing a mask. Um, hand sanitizer station. Have you been exposed to COVID? Um, do you have any questions? I'm going to put a little sticker on the you that tells you the time, because you're allowed 45 minutes in the building. And then uh, you're welcome to come in. So um, the self-check is still in use if you want to go and get some books or you would come to the desk and one of my staff would help you. So you can see that, it's, and it's sad to us, I'll admit it, all the snow fencing <laughs> that we've put up. So right now, the library is not a gathering place. Um, and I hate to say that, it's really hard for us to say that. The library right now is come, kind of a grab and go express service. So in the youth department right now, of course they have amazing books and the playaways, and we actually just got this new collection of Disney, really wonderful books. But right now there's no toys, there's no Legos, the iPads are all put away, the castle. Sadly, we've had to put Mickey Mouse away, which is very hard on us. So, um, but we do have wonderful books and Joa and her team really wanna help you 
uh, get things, um, and certainly homeschoolers. We know there's a lot of people looking at homeschooling. So please reach out to Joa Laville, Youth Services Manager, about how she can help you. So anyways, but right now, that, that's it. And one of the things we did, and you may have seen our video for our most popular items, which is kind of starting here with the new books down to DVDs, is we actually move them. We physically, not I, <laughs> we physically move them to give a little more space for that social distancing and browsing. So you can see where the old lines were, and I think we'll actually keep it this way. We kind of like the space. So all the new books, the new DVDs, we've got some arrows on the floor, kind of trying to keep the traffic. Um, more space here. And for those of you who, like me, still have no cable and internet, we have lots of great DVDs, television shows, movies, uh, kids' things for the kids. So maybe you want to go back and watch The West Wing again, or Hill Street Blues, or I'm looking over there, I see Grizzly Adams, or new things like Succession, or Frankie and uh, I don't remember what it's called, Frankie and Johnny. No, maybe not. Anyways, so we have lots of great things that you can check out. We still have the book sale. Um, right now, though, it's all exact change because we're not dealing with money. So if, you're in, if you want to buy a book, we can make it work, though. So then, as you can see, again, all the furniture has been kind of bundled up. And this is pretty much libraries all over the United States. So we're not doing anything out of the ordinary. Uh, a lot of libraries in Iowa have not even opened for this interior service. So Urbandale, uh, lots of other libraries, uh, they're just kind of doing the curbside. So we're kind of in between uh, Fort Dodge and West Des Moines have about the same service as we do. A lot of libraries are offering very limited service. Um, small libraries are doing appointments, kind of like going to the dentist. So, you know, everybody's kind of doing it on a different scale. So, um, we have limited computer use here at the library right now. So, um, 40 minutes to use a computer, you must make an appointment, um, bring a change if you need to make copies. And right now we're asking the computers are not for entertainment use, so not really YouTube videos or games, really for people who need to file insurance documents, FEMA, maybe something with DHS. Uh, you know, obviously people want to connect with their families by email, but right now we just can't accommodate entertainment use because we've gone from 20 computers down to six. So if you think about that, and of course we're only open at limited times. But, um, you know, again, ask my staff for help. I mean, they can probably save you some time in terms of what you're doing, you know, and especially if you're looking to, to get to a website, you know, to file a claim or something. So they definitely want to help you. But right now, again, you can't come here and bring your laptop, your own device, and work in the building, but we do have the picnic tables outside. And a lot of people just sit in their cars. So I know it's going to be hot the next couple of days. Um, I don't know if it's through the weekend, but, you know, again, we're trying to help you as much as we can. And the Wi-Fi is on 24 hours a day. So, you know, if you, maybe you work, you can come before or after work and do that. Um, what else? I'm trying to think what people ask us. Um, yeah, so right now we don't know the next phase. We're just kind of taking it, you know, we're waiting for school to open. We're kind of wanting to see if that has any impact. Uh, we consult regularly with the state library. We look at uh, the federal authorities uh, to see what the recommendations are and the best practices so that we can keep all of you safe and all of us safe and everybody else who's here at the library with you. But if you have any questions or concerns or comments, you can certainly reach out to me, Sarah Rosenblum, the director, and we'll certainly see, and maybe there's a suggestion of something that we can do. Um, we are busy cleaning things, but again, personal responsibility. So when you come in the building, you should use the hand sanitizer. I know there's one around the corner. You should, um, uh, use it on the way out and just kind of assume anything you touch you probably you know like like we all learned in kindergarten and first grade is you should wash your hands you know very well um, and so that we can keep all of you safe and healthy and um, you know we look forward to seeing you in the library and we look forward to you know next steps but at this point I just don't have that information so thank you <music>
Thompson. I'm public health nurse for Marshall County, and I'm happy to be here today on a gorgeous morning, uh, uh, early fall, as we like to call it. And, and it's been such a relief from that, uh, what I would call relentless heat that we had, just seemed to go on and on because it did. And so we get to enjoy some of these days and know we have some heat coming back, but it'll be short lived and we can get back to some fall type uh, activities. Now, I, you know, fall, we don't. I actually enjoy fall, I enjoy the season changes, but then we know it's the end of summer, the state fair's done, you know, in, in a normal year, and some of that boating stuff you do is kind of, you know, phasing out. But also, during this time, it's another change that's something to look forward to compared to some of the changes we've gone through. We're not new at COVID at all. We're kind of getting some experience with it. We are gaining understanding all the time. Uh, we don't know everything about it yet, but we're learning and there will be lots of learning to happen still. So anyway, we have some changes coming with fall, such as some crisp nights and, and I don't know, in Marshalltown, Marshall County, we've had lots of leaves down already. So maybe some less leaf raking that we would normally do because we've lost our beautiful trees. But uh, no, there's changes, there's apple cider, there's, you know, um, marshmallows on a fire that on the few leaves you have left that of course we know as I say that we I'm reminded in my head no open burning yet because you know we're in a drought it's quite a year isn't it but anyway make the best of the fall enjoy it enjoy those um, um, evenings that are nice to be outside and make sure you take time to um, find some peace with all of it with the changes and I want to remind you with COVID in our future still that um, um, our holiday plans will look differently. They probably will in order to keep everybody safe. And so plan accordingly, start thinking about that. So it's not a shocker and not as disappointing. Uh, you can do a, this year, that's do this. Maybe smaller groups, you know, where you're um, staying more closer to home and that type of thing. So you're not as exposed to as many people because the coronavirus is still there and it's still affecting people and it's still affecting lives. So talking about that, I want to uh, talk about, you know, as we go through this and as more people have experienced it or are going through it experiencing and with schools opening and colleges opening, there's going to be more, more exposure as we know. And um, that 14, 14 day quarantine period can be very, very painful and difficult. You know, I make lots of phone calls. I talk to lots of people and uh, until it affects us, each of us individually, it's hard to really get that how long 14 days is, okay? Especially with our children and, and contacts. So when we're having close contacts with people, we're also putting ourselves up to the uh, great, great chance of having to do a 14 day quarantine. That means uh, people can't go to work or they can't go to school and that type of thing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what the quarantine is. So a quarantine means, it's a person who lives in a household or has been exposed to a person who is confirmed to have COVID-19. So you don't have it, but someone else does. And so what you need to do, and call public health, that's what I do all day, uh, you need to separate yourself from the person who has the COVID virus, is what I want to say. Because we want to make sure that you did not catch it from that person. It's kind of an easy word to say, and I've been using words like exposed and that type of stuff, but it's really, we're trying to make sure that you didn't catch the virus from the person that has it. And always remember, it's kind of hard when you think you may have given a virus to somebody, no one wants to do that. And so just understand that it's easy, very easy to do. So we want to make sure you didn't catch it, your virus, the virus from someone you're exposed to, and uh, we would help you sort out what's a true exposure. That's a whole nother lesson. But anyway, we'd have you stay home from 14, for 14 days so you're not exposed to other people and watch for symptoms to make sure that you did not catch it. So when you're home those 14 days, you, uh, the rest of the family can do their thing and go to work, go to school, that type of thing, watching for symptoms among themselves, but particularly watching with you, the exposed person. That's how we'll say it today. And um, because then we can stop that spread. The more people you're around, because you know we're looking 48 hours before you started having symptoms and we want to, and you don't know you have it and who are you around by staying home staying in your house doing those types of things you're helping to stop that spread and less people have to stay home also 
All right? So that's what we're trying to do. So um, remember that's a tough thing, especially if you have a child at home that's been exposed, because it happens, it can happen and it will happen still. Then who's going to stay home with them? How are we going to make this work? Can't go to daycare, you know, all those things that happen. So this is a time when we really, really need to buckle down and say, um, you know, we're not going to do all those activities. We're going to limit our exposure. We're going to pay attention to who we're around and make sure we keep that six foot distance uh, with uh, less than 15 minutes at a time. So, you know, it's not walking past someone at the grocery store. Um, we want people to keep six feet, but scurrying past or walking past with our card or whatever um, would not be considered an exposure. But if you stopped and talked and were closer than six feet, for 15 minutes, that would be considered an exposure. So I just want to um, help sort that out. And I'm, I'm going to share with you that it's not easy to sort out. I get phone calls all the time. We have to kind of go back and who was here and how long. And we always want to make sure it's been a true exposure. The job, the, the uh, want is not to have people stay home unless we really need them to do that. We're really trying to learn how to live in this world we're in right now the best we can and by paying attention and limiting some of those things, that will help. Um, you know, um, you can make choices on activities the Labor Day weekend, not be in three different places, you know, choose a place that you would enjoy the company of a, a very few people, social distance, of course, and, and kind of limit that and not run from place to place because that's just more people that are, you're being exposed to and that you're exposing. So just kind of think of that in your mind. I um, am not a hermit by any means, but I do pay attention and make, and make choices of what I'm going to do. And, and the choices are good for me and actually they're good for you. So we're going to also talk about the mask, the facial covering. Um, it's really, really important that, that wearing the mask is... Uh, you know, we kind of feel like I'm, you're, my mask does not protect me from you at all. That's why we have to maintain the six feet, okay? And, um, but my mask protects you from me. We know why we wear it now, but how do you wear it? You really need to cover your nose and mouth. Many people have it down here and stuff, and we need to have you cover your nose also. And it's, uh, it's hard to remind people to do that because they're, doing, they're trying so hard to actually have it on their face and it keeps slipping and we understand that. So if your mask doesn't fit you and it's uncomfortable and you have to keep fiddling with it, it's time to look for a different style or a newer mask and your elastic may be worn out. I've seen people actually kind of twist it around their ears, you know, the, the, to shorten it up a little bit on each side. And uh, so, you know, remember to have your mask fit well because that's that's the reason why you're wearing it to keep protect other people from you um, they talked on TV that someone had um, actually um, did an experiment of coughing where they could s spray surfaces and see what where the spittle went that we don't even know we have and it was much much very few with the mask on because it's all staying here and a lot for quite a distance with it off. So that's, that's what you're doing is you're protecting other people. So thank you very much for doing that. And I mean it. So, and when I see you at the grocery store, just wave hi and we'll smile and maybe see in our eyes that we're smiling. How's that sound? And find your joy and peace. And follow the arrows. And follow the arrows, but I'm terrible at that. <laughs> Actually, yes, because I think, oh, I need to go get this. I run all over, but just keep on moving, right? Maintain that six foot distance. Um, especially when you're yakking, which I love to do at the grocery store, actually. So um, if I see you there, it'll be, it will be fun for me. That's almost my social time, to be very honest with you. So anyway, until next time, thank you and have a good day. <laughs>